Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to some more Anderson basketball. We are live from Navarro High School, the home of the Vikings, for yet another district contest for the Anderson Trojans. They enter tonight's game looking to push it to a 10-game win streak. They've won nine in a row. And they enter at 8-0 in district play. 21-8 overall are the Trojans. Their opponent, the Navarro Vikings, are 5-19, just 1-7 in district play. Uh, their one win coming over um, Travis High School. We are coming down the stretch here as we head towards the playoffs. Anderson, the lone undefeated team, of course, at the top of district. Crockett Northeast behind them at 6-2. and two. Lockhart 5-3. and three. McCallum 4-4. Four and four. Navarro 1-7, and seven, or Lhasa 2-6, and six, excuse me. 1-7 and seven is Navarro and 0-8. Oh is Travis. The Anderson Trojans are coming off of their second win of the season against Lhasa, their fourth straight against the Raptors. It was it was kind of an ugly game for Anderson. They were excellent in the first half and then uh, just Lhasa kind of got hot in the second and Anderson uh, was running a lot of bench units. And Anderson is a very deep team. They're an excellent team with, a, with an excellent bench, but a, a five-man bench lineup where you don't necessarily have a a real point guard is is real tough. A lot of the the guards for Anderson like Gill and Price that they like to bring off the bench or Bazarian. I feel like their more natural fit would be at the two. Mike Wagner really the only true point uh, on the team. So when he goes to the bench, uh, it can be hard to run the offense. But Anderson still defending well. They are. Entering tonight, looking to give Navarro their 20th loss of the season, looking to get themselves their 22nd win on the year. The last time these two played was the first game of the calendar year for Anderson. And it was win number three on this current win streak. Navarro losing that one back at Anderson's gym, 76-31. to 31. It's been a while since we have been able to hang back at Anderson's gym. We'll be back on Tuesday, but it's our first... Um, home game since last Friday when Anderson played uh, what felt like their best game of the season so far, 87-44 against McCallum. But since then, it's been back-to-back -back away games this week, and uh, I'm not a fan of it. I like being at home mostly because it's a known quantity for where I'm going to go and where I'm going to set up. Anytime I go to an away gym, I kind of have to figure that out for myself. As you can see, as we have rarely been at center court, that glorious Anderson High School plug right at half court. I truly cannot express how thankful I am for that. But the Trojans are just three minutes away from getting started here. Looking to make it 9-0 in district play. Going back. Uh, uh, the last time against Navarro it was a big game for Jack Francis. 17 points for him, 12 points for Bennett Blackerby, and 12 points for Nate Langley. Those were the three guys in double figures. In the last game against Navarro, back on January 4th, it was... Not a lot of scoring um, for Anderson in the last game. It was the Jackson-Gill game. They were only able to put up 53 points, which is their low in district so far. But they still did get the win, and of course that's all that matters. Gill, great game for him. He hit a couple big shots. He got a lot of run there in the second half, 11 points for him. Francis was also right there with 11. Blackerby had 10, and Wagner had 9. But Anderson will still be without the de facto starter Mitchell Whitlow tonight. He is still recovering from injury. He is okay. He should be good to go pretty soon. Talk to him a little bit last game if you missed it. Just want to say uh, before we get into the game, we are just a few minutes away. It looks like we're going to be able to get started a, a minute or two early. Only 90 seconds left on the clock. 7.24 p.m. right now. But just want to say we uh, have been struggling a little bit with connectivity. If you want to pull back the curtain, we, uh, we operate on like a hotspot that I use to connect to uh, the internet on my computer and uh, to stream. And when you don't have good internet, we have one bar on the hotspot right now. Not a lot I can do. And I don't love that. It's very frustrating. But we will have the uh, the replay posted as soon as possible. I talked to our technical director, Suna Venkat, and I asked her to push our game to the front of the line as far as priority goes for getting the replay posted tonight. So hopefully we will be able to get that posted pretty soon if there is any difficulties with the test. 
but it looks like we may be ready to send it down to the PA. We'll be right back with the opening tip. You're listening to Anderson Basketball on Vibe Live. Hi, we're back. Game time. Trojans looking to keep it perfect in the district run. Not many games left. It'll be Langley and number 12, Calvin Phillips on the jump, and this guy can get up there. And the tip is going to be nearly stolen away by Dale. Tombe will take it. Can't touch it there, and that's Brito Reyna. He's a guy that likes to fire up a lot of threes, if you remember from the last game, and that has been the season for Navarro. Just through the hands. Shannon Corley, and it's a turnover. Anderson will start with the ball and the possession arrow. An unforced error. Here's Langley. Ooh, almost got away with the walk, but here's Wagner going to pull up on the baseline. His shot rattles in. Anderson opens up the scoring. 2-0. We are underway. Here's Kelvin Phillips bringing the ball up. He had... Uh, he had eight in the first game against Anderson as he drives baseline. Good job for Dale, cutting him off. And now a kick into the corner, an open look from three. That's going to be no good. Rebound into the air, a weird bounce. 
Eight up, Dale, but Blackaby was able to get it. Now Wagner running the floor. He finds Langley. Nate's going to take it to the basket right at Christian Tombe. And he lays it up and in. Nate Langley's first basket. Only three points in the game against Lassa for Nate. So good to see him get going in the first quarter. One minute gone. Anderson leads it four to nothing. Here's Phillips. Got around Francis, but that was off of his hands and out of bounds. Anderson basketball. Already a quick timeout. 6.42 remains here in the first quarter. We'll go ahead and keep it here as we just got started. It's good to see a good start for the Trojans as they have really turned it around. Uh, they're coming out starting games much stronger than they were in the early part of the season as they continue to get to full strength. and Not in the game tonight, but just want to give a quick shout-out to one of my favorite players on this team, Mr. Colin Page who just committed to uh, continue his football career at the greatest university in the world, the University of Texas. So if uh, Colin goes and we're automatically good again, then I'm going to have to say as Blackerby gets inside and they're going to get him for a travel. But if uh, Colin goes and uh, is able to turn the program around, I will, I will give him every single bit of credit because... As a lifelong Texas fan and current student, I've had a bad time over the last 12 years. Quite quite a long time. <laughs> Most of my life. As, ooh, Francis got caught gambling as Phillips is going to take it to the hole. Spins it in. That's a good finish for Kelvin. Now Wagner bringing the ball up with some speed. He kicks to the corner. Francis is open. He's going to take one dribble in. Knocks it down. Anderson hitting from the floor early. That's two jump shots from the short corner there. Francis and Wagner both hitting. It's now 6-2. to two. Anderson still has a four-point lead. That's their largest of the game. Now here's Phillips swinging around. That's to Cervantes. Now into the corner for Brito Reyna. He had a team-high nine points in the last game as this is going to be another risky pass. Cervantes almost couldn't gather it. Now back outside for Phillips into the corner for Brito Reyna. They are not giving him much room to shoot. Now here's Tombe. It's going to go with Dale. And Wagner going to try and take it away from behind. Now he's doubled. Is going to have to turn and shoot. Can't hit the shot, but the rebound's going to go right back to him. Dale able to knock it away and into the hands of Mike. Wagner now into the front court, dribb dribbling in. Beautiful feed to the corner. It's Penn of Blackerby. That one rattles out. Langley on the board. He's going to go up strong. No. Langley on another board. Swings it out for Francis. Jack going to not take the three. A step back. Rattles around, can't drop in. Dale just mistimed his jump. Would have been another Trojan offensive rebound. But now come the other way, Cervantes. Takes it all the way in, and Wagner just takes it right from him. Picking his pocket. Now Jack into the front court. Dishes it off to Blackerby, who dishes it to Langley. A beautiful fast break for Anderson. And Langley follows it up with his second basket of the game. It's 448 left in the first. Anderson has an 8-2 lead. Phillips on the inbound. Here's Phillips. Get it to Tombe. Tombe with it outside. First substitution into the game is number 23, Juan Hernandez. Now back to Corley, back to Phillips, and we will keep the possession going. Hernandez has it. Good job, Anderson, running off any action there. They get it to Brito Reyna, and Wagner's in his face. He's just able to get it off to Tumbe. Posting up Langley, back outside for Kenny. Now here's Hernandez. Anderson not letting anything buy him on the perimeter here as Phillips is going to try and take it himself, loses it. Blackerby will be defending him. Here's Phillips, crosses over, gets into the paint, kicks to the corner, and they're going to get him for a walk. Still no fouls called on either team halfway through the first quarter. You never know what crew you're going to get. Not like a crew that lets them play. 
So here come the Trojans. Now Wagner catching it in the corner. Looked at the three. Instead, he'll take it inside. Forces the pass into Armour, who's just checked in. First off the bench. Now a Navarro player down to the floor. Wagner tries to take it away. Phillips is going to be out running with it. Wagner coming up behind him to try and take it away. But they're calling out Wolf for him. Francis going to pick up. Here's Brito Reyna. As I said, he likes to fire away. That's a long three and an air ball. The shooter shoot. This is interesting. Usually, I, I feel like uh, all season, I know at the Anderson gym, the away team is on the our right side, the this camera right side. But this time, the home team, Blackerby, going to catch and shoot. Rattling in and out. That's two times on Bennett Blackerby threes today. And it just rattles out. He's a good shooter, but sometimes it's a little streaky. Here's Tumbe. Uses the screen. Into the game is Jacoby Simmons. Here's Phillips. Wagner pokes it free. Phillips takes it in. Now Simmons going to try from the free throw line, and Simmons knocks it down for the second bucket of the game for the Vikings. Now ahead to Blackerby. Bennett going to take it all the way to the cup. Lays it in. Beautiful finish by Bennett Blackerby, putting on the burst of speed. And good to see one drop for him. He's got two. The only starter who hasn't scored is the one on the bench, and that's Fred Dale, Derek Armour, the first off the bench today. Phillips takes it in, lays it in. Now Francis got to pick up. Into the corner, Wagner catches it right inside the paint. Beautiful position, gets the floater. That's his second bucket. So Wagner and Langley looking for their shots early under two to play here in the first. Here comes Phillips. This nice wide angle means we can just get the entirety of the court on this side. Here's Tombe running around the pick. He's got armor on him. Now he's going to drive in, post him up, and finds Phillips. Phillips kills his dribble. Now zipping it across is Tombe, and that's going to be a shot from the mid-range. No good. And no foul called on the Simmons box out. Here comes Francis. He's got a one-on-one. -on -one. Avoids Brito Reyna and gets the lay. That's three Anderson players with their second basket already in the first quarter. Six to 14. Trojans have held on to the lead the whole game so far. Here's Phillips. He gets around Jack, so I'll switch armor onto him. He's killed his dribble down low, so Derek just got to force him to the baseline, and he does, but he's able to get it out to Tombe. Back across, that's Hernandez. Now Hernandez looked for something to do with it. He gets it to Brito Reyna, and they're playing him strong. Anderson Trojans have read the scouting report. Forty-five seconds left. They might hold for the final shot. Hand off to Phillips. They're getting armor onto him. The Bazarian at the scorer's table, but we might not see him. As Phillips drives in, loses it out of bounds, and that's going to be a turnover Anderson basketball. Checking into the game is Ben Bazarian. Also checking in is Cervantes and Corley. Rito Reyna going to check out along with Hernandez. Thirty seconds left. So it's Francis, Gill, Blackerby, Armour, and Bazarian. And guess who they're uh, putting <laughs> the ball in the hands of? That's Jack Francis. Under twenty to go here in the first quarter. Here's Jack. Under 10 left to play. He's getting switched on to Corley. Over to Blackerby. Now they find Francis in the corner. He's going to drive in. Kicks to a cutting gill. His push shot is no good. Gets it back. Goes back up with it. Can't hit it. Tumbe has it. Phillips has it. The half-court heave will not count. And it doesn't. So that's our first quarter. Anderson up 14-6. to We've got a minute left on the clock. For a break, we'd like to thank you for tuning into the broadcast tonight. Hopefully... We are able to stay connected, but for now, we're going to go ahead and take our first break. And when we come back, we'll have second quarter action for you. You're listening and watching to Anderson Basketball on Vibe Live. Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 
under 16 seconds. Really close at the quarter. Rotates to Wilson. She fires the three. Oh my god, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one! Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Anderson Ball for the start of the second quarter as they did lose the jump. Campbell Duncan, Fred Dale, Bazarian, Armour, and Francis in the game. Jack in the corner. Jack trapped in the corner. Don't see that a lot. They get it to Campbell Duncan who pushes it off to Dale. Fred stuck underneath the basket, gets it off to Francis, pushes it up and lays it in. A beautiful, strong finish for Jack Francis. Already with six points in the game. Anderson has pushed it to a 10-point lead for the first time tonight. Got started a little early and much earlier than we normally do. A beautiful 7.30 start gives everyone a little bit more of their evening as <laughs> Navarro not fielding a JV team. As here's Phillips. Ooh, got away with uh, dragging his foot there on a little bit of a slip, but Cervantes is able to go and take that ball back. Here comes Phillips. Now Tumbe. Brito Reina getting ready to check back in after the first minute gone here in the quarter. Not a whole lot happening. A lot of standing around. As Dale going to come and try and take that away. Here's Cervantes. As this, is, this isn't really even a motion offense. As here comes, ooh, missed shot there, but Phillips had a good look at it. Here comes Campbell Duncan. Over to Francis, wide open from downtown. Can't connect a little bit short. Six and a half to play here in the half. Anderson, not much of a shooting team. It's the biggest knock I have against. Well, I would say size, but I mean, I've just seen them play so much and it really doesn't seem to matter a whole lot. But then again, Anderson really hasn't played um, just a, a freakishly athletic big. The the one that, I, that comes to mind is Javenson Sylvester over at Northeast, and he was a player that definitely gave Anderson a lot of trouble this year, and he's not even much of a big. He's just a, a leaper and can go get rebounds whenever he wants. But here's Tombe running the Chris Beard offense as a rebound underneath goes to Simmons. Tumbe taking it in. He's doubled by Duncan and Dale. A little sky hook on that one. Gets Christian Tumbe his first basket of the game. Now here comes Jack pushing the pace. Navarro there to cut him off. Screen comes from Armour. It's over to Campbell Duncan. He looks at the three. Instead, he'll take it into the basket. Floater's no good. Rebound batted away and into the hands of Shannon Corley. Now Anderson getting some subs back into the game. It'll be Blackerby and Gill at the next whistle. Here comes Tumbe. Turnaround jumper is no good. Dale, ooh, going back to get that rebound. Now here comes Francis into the corner for Bazarian. Now back outside for Jack. Jack working his way around the perimeter. He steps back. He's going to split the double, go into the basket, hits the shot. Anderson doing uh, pretty well operating in the paint here tonight. They've gotten a couple shots at that intermediate distance where I'm not sure whether to shoot or just do a little floater. And the floater's working tonight for the Trojans. It's not a shot you see them go to a whole lot. It's a tough one to master. The Tony Parker teardrop. As Bazarian out on Tumbe. And the way Bazarian plays, I, I feel like his lack of height is almost an asset because people go at him. That's twice now people have gone at him. That's twice now he's turned him back. He's, he's absolutely a plus defender. And if you're going to have people drive at him, he can pick their pocket. And that turns into offense for Anderson. As here is a shot inside the lane for Phillips. Rebound batted for Simmons. And we're going to get Armour on a foul. That's our first foul call of the game halfway through the second quarter. So Ben, Derek, and Jack to the bench. Here's Phillips on the wing. Duncan, Wagner, Blackerby, Gill, and Dale are the five for the Trojans. 
3.50 to go here in the first half. Here's Phillips. Rito Reyna, Wagner coming out on him. As now here, Simons. Phillips drives. Pulls it back out. Anderson doing an excellent job. Uh, Brito Reyna, they left him open. He's going to come up. That's his second attempt of the game. No, gets it back. Rebound to Phillips. Phillips going to drive in. Takes it all the way to the basket. Lays it up. And they're going to say a foul on the floor against Anderson. Phillips gets it into Toombe. Gill almost there to disrupt. It's back to Phillips as he's been the, been the guy tonight. Is that's a that's a bad shot. Good job from Dale defending, and that's a risky pass from Blackerby. Dale underneath, and Fred couldn't keep his footing. Bennett threading the needle on that one. He shows some passing flashes every now and then. Is that that should be a turnover? Maybe? No? I don't know. It's fine. Navarro ball. Ten-point game. Anderson up 18-8. 3-0-1. Is Gill there to get a deflection? And now leading the fast break. He's going to take it in right at Corley. Floater's good. That was a tough shot. He kind of got stuck in the, the amount of steps that it took him to get to the basket. It didn't really give him a natural uh, jumping off point for that layup. So he just kind of jump stop and went into little floater again. Anderson really making use of it. They're up to 20 points as here's Toombe firing from the corner. That's no good. Rebound Gill. This is it. And Jackson Gill's also a heck of a rebounder. Oof. Wagner. A little bit of miscommunication there as Brito Rain is going to get it. But the fact that he touched it means it's not a turnover for Anderson. So a break there for the Trojans. Here comes Blackerby. Bennett going to dribble into a three. Brito Rain a Definitely in his landing zone, but Bennett still able to knock it down. Lucky it wasn't a four-point play as Bennett gets his first shot from downtown in the game. The first such for Anderson. They've struggled from downtown um, all season, just not really their strength as a team. But every now and then you're going to get a, a, a quick burst from Blackerby and Francis. But it's a full timeout on the floor, so that means we'll take a quick break too. Back in 30 seconds, more second quarter action in just a minute. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com. Back in from the timeout. Anderson leads it by 15. Shannon Corley will be the one to inbound as Anderson brings back in Francis. So it's Francis, Blackerby, Wagner, Campbell Duncan, and Jackson Gill. Now Cervantes trapped with it out on the wing, and Jack going to take it away. He's got a two on one, but if he can get it out ahead of anyone, ooh, scoop layup in the air, Jack Francis. And with that, first Anderson player into double figures. He's got 10. Fresh off of an 11-point game on Tuesday. Under two minutes to go, they lob it across for Cervantes. And Jack nearly there to pick it away. He does again, but Cervantes able to get it back. Here's Brito Reyna. Now back to Cervantes as Jack going to pick up Phillips. And he's still getting these deflections out on the perimeter. Kind of playing the Colin Page position right now. As they get it into the corner for Corley. Now back outside for Cervantes. That's through his hands and a backcourt violation. As Gill takes it away. And he's just going to take it in for the little leg. It's not quite the way you're supposed to play those. But that's Gill's second basket. And over the last few games, it's, it's been an emergence for Jackson Gill. And that's a, that's, that's a player to, to build around for the future. As he is still just a sophomore and another turnover. Anderson the other direction. Jack Francis missed, uh, was forced into some weird timing there by Navarro. But Jack's still able to get the deuce. 12 points now. Anderson has exploded and pushed the lead out to 21. Nifty little run for the Trojans. 52 seconds remaining in the half. We'll go ahead and keep it here. Just took a break a moment ago. 
Kelvin Phillips, team high of four for Navarro right now. Tumbe and Simmons both have a deuce each. Langley, Wagner, Gill, all with four. Blackaby with five. Francis with 12. Gill still out on the floor with the starters, minus Dale. I'm going to have my eye on him. Because uh, if this game gets any more out of hand, I'm going to need something to keep me busy. I love to watch young guys, love to see how he rotates. So that's a nice job. Keep uh, staying in the right place for Jackson. <laughs> on his defensive rotations, Wagner gets the pickpocket there. Simmons is going to go try and take it away. And they're going to get Langley on a foul. That's the third going against Anderson. Zero going against Navarro. They're really letting him play here today. And as a result, this is a this is about a 20-minute half of basketball with 20, 20 seconds left. As Brito Reyna looking for somewhere to go with it. You, you got five seconds. As Francis barely mistimed his jump. He's got a smile on his face about it, too. Now it's Phillips with under 15 to go. They get it to Tumbe. Now calling over for Phillips. Blackerby defending. Back to Tumbe. He's facing up. Just going to fire away. Rebound goes to Gill. Now Wagner. Mike going to heave it away at the buzzer. Ooh, just short. The baseball pass. But that's how the first half ends. 29 to 8. Anderson. Putting on a big run at the end of half number one. And they are out to a big lead again. Tell me if you've heard that before. Anderson leads a district game by double figures at the half. Not much has changed. Actually, nothing has changed. No scoring update. So still Francis with 12. Black would be 5. Wagner, Gill, and Langley with 4. It was a good half of basketball for Anderson. Some good defense. Kelvin Phillips for Navarro making some nice plays. Jacoby Simmons coming in off the bench. Getting some offensive rebounds and keeping his team in this thing. But hasn't been enough. Anderson with a 21-point lead at the break. Going to go ahead and send it to break ourselves. We've got nine minutes of halftime ahead of us. When we come back, we'll talk through the game a little bit. See what else is going on in the wide world of sports. My Rockets are losing by double figures again. <laughs> It's, it's, it is kind of nice because I miss so many Rockets games uh, working at, at night for, for this job. And i got to say, I don't mind. <laughs> I miss when the Rockets were good. Oh, man. Pretty much my whole adolescence. But now they're bad. It's cyclical. We'll be good again. We've got some good rookies, some, co some good young players. Kevin Porter Jr. really coming along as a point guard right when I was starting to get worried about it. But anyway... Not what we're talking about. What we are talking about is halftime and how it is that right now. We'll be back in about five minutes uh, whenever the Trojans come back out to the court to get some shots up. But for now, it's time for you to go grab dinner, go refill the popcorn, grab another drink, whatever. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels in high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vipevype.com. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. 
As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vite View program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vite Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out how to join Vite Campus today. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VibeBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe View program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vibe Campus today. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at vipebype.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, about yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to vipebype.com. Hey high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vibe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vibe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out more about Vibe U today. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VibeBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. And we're back. Just a few minutes left at halftime. Anderson winning. And that's the story of the game so far. Got a couple good games uh, in the district slate. McCallum at Northeast. That'll be, a, that'll be a good one. And then Crockett at Lockhart. Always tough when you got to go down to Lockhart. Looking forward to that rematch next week against Northeast. It was the probably the team that's made Anderson struggle the most so far in district play. Uh, just as an entire unit, able to keep that game pretty close throughout. And uh, I cannot complain about that. Is the fatigue of the fatigue of dominance does get old after a while. I can't imagine 
being like an Alabama football fan where you win every game by five-plus touchdowns, and then if you don't, you're, like, frustrated about it. That's got to be a great feeling most of the time. But then when you give up a field goal to the Citadel, then that's all anyone can talk about all week is, has Saban lost his touch? That's what I'm going to start saying about Coach Pitt. If Navarro scores more than one basket for the rest of the game, I'm going to start calling for heads. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Anderson leading it by 21 points. At the break, Jack Francis, another gem, 12 points in the first half. A lot of guys getting in off the bench in that uh, in that first half. Jackson Gill continues his emergence. That's a storyline to follow if you want. A minute left before we get started here as they head over to the bench. Gill, you remember him from last season, got plenty of run uh, on the team, got plenty of those... Uh, Pretty much <laughs> those entire fourth quarters uh, last season when Anderson was up so big. But here now, really um, kind of stepping in as an actual member of the rotation, especially as we've moved on later down the season. And he's just a sophomore. He kind of like Bennett Blackaby from last year where he comes in, you know, every now and then he plays for three, four minutes. And it's you get a lot of pleasant surprises there. Now Bennett, after a year, after a, a, a summer of hard work and, through the spring and everything, he has become a starter and a very important piece of this Anderson basketball team. So really like to see the growth that the, these, this team and these players are able to, to have here as we have gotten started here in the second half. Dale out on the wing on defense. It is the same starting five for Anderson. Here's Toon Bay. Wagner knocks it out of bounds, and he just isn't going to be able to save that one. 21 seconds gone, and that's how many points Anderson's winning by the parallels. Now here's Toombe. Back to Corley. Now um, some standing. Here's Simmons. He'll get the start here in this half after a productive set of minutes in the first. Here's Phillips working his way around the screen. Black would be right there to cut it off. Ice, ice, ice. Here's Toombe. Langley going to be defending on him. He's got his back to the basket outside the three-point line as Anderson just content to let Navarro do this. Anderson hasn't scored a ton tonight, but it's it's because the time of possession has got to be ludicrously in favor of Navarro as each possession is, it feels like it takes a minute sometimes as there's Wagner able to just take it away and he'll get a layup on the other end. Ooh, he misses the shot. And they're going to get a goaltend on Phillips. He did go up and... Uh, Touch the backboard. Well, that's a call. What are they saying? It would have been Anderson's basketball either way. They will count the basket. Mike Wagner, that's his third of the game. Six points for him. So in both halves, Anderson opens up the scoring first. As Francis is there to knock that out, and it will stay. This direction, Jack wanted it. As they take the safe route for Brito Reyna. As a, here's a trap. You've got to call a timeout. That one's going to go through the hands of Brito Reyna. Too high for him. And Blackerby's there to take it away. Now him pointing out traffic. He takes it to the basket. Loses it. Spins somehow. Got free. And that's just going to be a travel. If they didn't call that and he got the pass to Dale, that would have been crazy. But they did call it, and he didn't quite get the pass to Dale. So I guess that's nothing. But I like to see him try stuff. When um, you always want to play as if, you know, you play. You don't want to mess around in game. But here's another turnover as Wagner loses it. And Langley will just take it over. It gets to the basket, lays it in. Nate Langley. Strong to the cup, his third of the game. But yeah, as, uh, as I was saying, if if you have a big lead, you, you might take that time as a player to be a little bit more daring, try and do some things that you wouldn't ordinarily try, as that's Blackerby with another steal. Here's Freddie, the other direction, gets to the basket, lays it up, can't hit the shot. Jack on the rebound. Jack misses, gets his own board, hits the shot, but it will be a foul. That's the first foul of the game in either half for Navarro.
scientist at a line. Is that one rattles in. The nature documentary has set in. I hate how quiet it gets. I feel weird talking. Here's Francis to the line. The rare elusive species. Goes two for two. Thirty-five to eight. As Anderson has started on a six to nothing run and they'll get the ball right back. As Francis knows they're scared of him. Francis with the ball. Zips it over to Wagner. He's left open. He's going to fire. He's going to connect. Nine for Mike. This year's Cervantes, they've, had a, they've been able to pick his pocket, especially with these doubles. So he's leaving the ball out there, and that's going to be a foul going against Blackerby. Oof. No, they're going to call a timeout. Excuse me. I think that Anderson's going to be the benefactor of some good timing. As Navarro called the timeout right as Blackerby was fouling. Allegedly fouling. But that's a full timeout. We'll go ahead and take our first break of the half. More third quarter action coming up. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Nine oh run to start the half for the Trojans. Haven't given up a point in nearly three minutes of action here in quarter number three. The Golden State Trojans are at it again. This here's Phillips. Tumbe. Screen comes from Brito Reyna. As Phillips to the line, they're going to call a block on Langley. So two shots is Nate. Tonight, it hasn't really mattered, and they haven't really called a lot of fouls uh, on either side, but Anderson really just <laughs> cannot get a call, and I mean that in the most literal sense. They, they have gotten one all game. But I think it's been a pretty clean game for both teams. Um, they're certainly letting them play. As Phillips' first free throw is off. As we are zooming through this game. Got started at 7.30, already about halfway through the third. As Anderson still has yet to give up a point. And he goes over 2, so still no points. As Francis zips it ahead to Blackerby. Bennett just going to take it after, after waiting a minute, and he knocks it down. I'm a big believer of take the shot in motion, but when you have a, sh a shooting stroke that sweet, uh, do whatever you want. Who am I to say? Here's Kelvin Phillips dribbled that off his own foot. Bennett going to outrun everyone to get it. Now Jack Francis going to take it to the basket, lays it up, lays it in. That's another one for Jack. 16 points in the game. He's knocking on the door of another 20-piece. Anderson. Off to a 14 to nothing run here in half number two. Here's Tumbe. Phillips. Screen coming from Brito Reyna. Getting Langley out on him. And Anderson is just extremely switchable as a team. Everybody on the court can guard anybody on the court. As, ooh, Bennett, he's got steals on the mind tonight. As here's Simmons, you got to get rid of that. It's a five second, and he finally does. As Bennett still with the nose for the ball, gets it and gets out ahead of Brito Reyna, but his foot was on the baseline. As we've got a substitution, and Bennett has been feeding him for these all night. 
And he's got several. Really love to see the hustle from him, just going out and getting some of these loose balls. As Corley into the game now. Phillips, four points for him. We'll take this time to update the scoreboard as here's Toomby driving in. Right at Dale, he's going to turn around, take a tough shot, and knocks it down. Christian Toombe. His second basket of the game. Here comes Jack Francis, finds Wagner, takes it to the hole, and that's going to be a foul going up. So with that, Navarro stops the run. But it was 14-0 to start the half. Wagner short, and that one looked short out of his hand. But 3.20 left here in the quarter. A 14 to nothing start. It was uh, 29 to eight, it's now 43 to 10. As Mike goes over two, that's a rare sight. Usually one of the more sure free throw shooters on the roster. But can't quite crack his way into double figures. He's stuck at nine as Francis read that one like a book. Now all the way in, oof, he wanted the dunk. But Phillips chased him down enough to dissuade him of that. But still gets the layup, still has 18 points. Just robbed him of a potential highlight. And isn't that the biggest crime there is? Like fouling LeBron James uh, on a, in an open court fast break situation should be like a, a legitimate felony as Langley able to take that one away. As here comes Blackerby, he's left alone. Euro step, and that's beautifully read by Phillips to knock it out. As here comes Phillips running the other way. He's going to drive in at Wagner, steps back. Francis got a hand on it, got it ripped free. Now here's Blackerby, zips it off to Francis. Francis going at Corley. Ooh, Euro misses the shot. Million dollar move with a 10 cent finish. As here comes Corley, right at Dale, hits him and drops it. As the Anderson crowd really traveling well here tonight, they feel like they have more, like more than double the fans that Navarro has as Anderson bringing in five bench players as it's that time. Give the starters a little bit. Francis checks out with 18, Blackerby with eight, Wagner with nine, Langley with six. As the free throw is no good, rebound goes to Kalen Hole. Now here comes CP3, pushing the pace. He finds it, Bazarian underneath the basket. And now back to Corey Price, he's left open. Now back to Bazarian who's left wide. His shot from downtown is short. Ben struggled to get the, the, the outside shot going this season. As we are under two minutes to play here in the third quarter, 45 to 12. Here's Toombe. He's going to go right at Donahoe. Donahoe stays in front of him. The turnaround rolls around and out. Now here's Price, lobs it to Bazarian. Ben going to put it on the floor. Goes cross court to Alexander. Now back to Ben. Put it on the floor again. Into the corner for Alexander. He looked at the three. Now back to Ben. Bazarian going to pull it back. Zips it across court. To Price, Price going to take it in, finds Bazarian cutting, hits the layup. Took some contact and still able to finish Bazarian. Two points in each game against Navarro so far. Now here's Corley, gets it to Phillips, and Phillips goes right at Donahoe. His layup is a little bit off. Good job to get there. But here comes Bazarian pushing the pace. Now he's stuck without a dribble. He finds Hull. Now back to Price, Price driving in. Dishes it off to Donahoe, and Liam just wasn't quite ready for it. Price was sure it was deflected. Trojan's still not getting those calls. But they've made do. It's a pretty well-officiated game tonight, all in all. It's fun to, to say mean things to the refs, but I <laughs> feel like you got to give them their flowers when they've earned them, too. It's a tough job. As here's Cervantes, now back out to Tumbe. There's under 30 seconds to play in the third quarter. Kalen Hole defending. As Tumbe driving at him, gets around him. Ooh, the spin to get himself free. That's a nice move underneath the basket. 
putting a hole in the blender. But still 10 seconds left in the quarter. Price has it. He's going to get it off the hole. Now Kalen looking for something to do with it. Gets it to Donahoe. Four seconds. Liam to the basket. Loses it and throws it up at the buzzer. It went in through the bottom of the basket. That should count for something, right? No? Yeah. No. But fourth, <laughs> fourth quarter on the way. Anderson only giving up six points there in the third. Let's do some quick math. They score 18-6 to six there in the third quarter as their frame three has been excellent all throughout the season. My Rockets down 13 at halftime. <laughs> but another good Garrison Matthews game. And, it, you know, that, that's all I really care about. That and a good draft pick. But we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, 30 seconds, and we'll be back with the fourth quarter. Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, Billy really Colton in the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to FightBYPE.com. Okay, fourth quarter, as we are zooming through this one. Got started at 7.30. It's the fourth quarter. It's only 8.15. As here's Bazarian finding Duncan in the corner. Campbell going to drive in. Now back to Price. Price loses it, gets it back in theory, loses it again. Simmons to the ground. Now Phillips. Phillips going to take it up. Bazarian Ben. Cuts it off the drive. Brito Reina going to come up shooting. That's no good. Out of bounds. For Anderson, it's going to be Gill, Price, Bazarian, Duncan, and Armour. Give me the CP3 DA. The Suns is looking good with Bismack Biombo these days. As Cervantes is able to just take that one away. Campbell Duncan turns it over. Now Phillips and Bazarian going to go whistled for the foul. I did hear the slap from up here. But that'll send Phillips to the line. He's got four points. He had eight in the first matchup between these two teams. As this has been another low scoring game for Anderson, but I really do feel like that's, they just haven't had the ball very much. And, and the way they play, I mean, they're, I wouldn't say they're dependent on fast breaks, but they're so good at <laughs> turning the ball or turning the other team over and, and getting out and running. And so they just score a lot of their points on it, fast breaks. As Zarian zips that one across the court. And uh, I didn't see it. I didn't see that. Don't worry about it. Well, that'll be a turnover. Yeah, it's just a low-scoring game um, as a result of, I mean, you'll see in a minute. they have seen it all game. They, they take a long time on these possessions, and they're walking the ball up and everything. This here's Simmons. He's going to attack. And uh, an off-balance leaner is good as Kelvin Phillips starting to heat up. He's got seven points, three straight for Navarro. Now into the corner for Bazarian. He's left open, going to come up firing a little bit short. Rebound batted out. Armor not able to save it. Here comes Phillips, and he loses that out of bounds. Price didn't touch it. That just went off his own leg. Trojan basketball. Here's Duncan with it at the top of the key. Gill fading to the corner. He's left open, and he's going to knock that down. Navarro has been aggressive on these closeouts all game. And... Uh, I know high school basketball and NBA basketball are officiated very differently, but those are fouls in the NBA. Those are sometimes flagrant fouls in the NBA. This here's Phillips driving to the basket, gets around Campbell Duncan, and he is patting the heck out of his stats right now. That's five straight points for him. Now up to Bazarian. Now Price. 
Dumps it off to Campbell Duncan. A good feed, but he can't hit the shot. Rebound goes to Tumbe. And he'll have it out on the wing. He's going to take it at Bazarian. But Ben got a hand in there, and that's going to drop. That's a – we're starting to get these bounces. Thought Ben might have gotten away with it. Christian Tumbe connects. That's two players with nine now as Phillips is able to steal it, but he's out of bounds. Anderson still with a healthy lead, so just getting the bench units a little bit more action. I'd love to see uh, Duncan and his price left open for three, fading to the corner, rattling out. Uh, Duncan and Gill. Love to get as much game time as them as they are still so young. As Phillips driving in, loses it. But I think Bazarian was the one that knocked that out of bounds. That'll be the end of the night for a lot of these Anderson starters, I would assume. But with 519, Brito Reyna is able to get it in. Phillips on Bazarian. As Ben knocks it away, Brito Reyna able to clear it back. Gill. Couldn't quite come up with the seal, but Tumbe going to come up firing. That's well short. Rebound goes to Campbell Duncan. Campbell looking ahead, finds Bazarian. Ben going to take it to the basket. Dumps it off to Armour. Armour can't get the layup to fall. Taps the rebound out. Bazarian's there. Gill left open on the release. Can't hit. Armour. He's stuck under the basket. Got to get, get rid of it. Now Price, he's going to come up shooting. That's good. Corey Price with his first basket since his explosion. Back in the last home game for Anderson last Friday. Now it's Tumbe outside. And after all this, Anderson has already tied their score against Lhasa. Now driving in, Gill able to disrupt that pass and get it away from Phillips. They're going to get Corley back in for Simmons. And here's Tumbe. Gets it back to Phillips. Armour going to pick him up. He's going to get it in. Take an off-balance shot. That one rattles out. Rebound hits the floor and goes out of bounds. It was off of one of those two Trojan players. It'll stay here. Four minutes to go as Pace kind of dragging to a halt in this fourth quarter. We're still halfway through it. Now back for Cervantes. Corley. As they get Phillips cut into the basket, he got around Gill, but he blew the layup, and that'll go out of bounds off of Tumbe. Really good back cut for Kelvin Phillips. Just couldn't hit the layup. And you know, nine times out of ten, there's that one. As Campbell Duncan taking that on a straight line to the basket, getting his first bucket of the game. He's got two. As here's another turnover, Corey Price out and running. He's going to take it to the basket, gets it on Phillips, and Gill is going to get fouled on the follow. Kelvin Phillips. Just a very athletic player. <laughs> Gill for two. And right now he's followed up an 11 point game with eight points with still half a quarter to play. As it's gonna be Gill Alexander, Price, Donahoe, and Hull. Jackson Gill, nine points. Go for 10, my son. As Price gets another steal, Corey the other direction.
Going to take it all the way to the basket and gets it to go. What a move to go up for two for Corey. Five points all in the fourth. Dare I say the bench unit's cooking. Now here's Corley. Phillips going to drive in, go with Donahoe, gets around him. Liam doing a great job staying straight up. Phillips almost got the roll anyway. Somehow gets his own rebound back. Too high off the glass. Rebound to the floor and to Donahoe. Price the other direction. Corey, cross court, hole into the corner. Gill left open. He's firing away. That's no good. Rebound batted around. Donahoe comes up with it, goes to the basket. Can't connect. Gets his own board back. Goes out to Price. Now back into the corner. Liam comes up firing. That's no good. Gill on the follow. Too short. Gill on the follow. Again, it's good. Another double-figure game for Jackson Gill. He has 11, just like he did against Lhasa. Now here's Toombe. Backing his way in. Back to Corley under two minutes to go in, in the uh, in the ball game now. So it looks like we will finish this game in about an hour. So here's Toombe going to rise up and connect. That'll be the first Navarro player into double figures. Not something they were able to do in the first game of the season as whole. Wisely just going to take it up across half court. Dishes it off the price. Now Corey stepping back. Gill coming and setting a screen. Gets it to Gill, who's left open at the free throw line. His shot won't go. Toombe on the board, but Donahoe's still fighting for it. All righty, under 90 seconds to play. Toombe behind the back. Looking for Phillips. That's knocked out of bounds by way of Liam Donahoe. Getting D.A. back into the game. They're going to have Gill head to the bench, so that'll wrap up his night. 11 points for Jackson Gill as the emergence continues. This will make it 9-0 for the Anderson Trojans in district. That means we've got five games left. How sad. Re, uh, three of those are home games, though. As here comes Derek Armour. Pulls up. Back outside for Kalen Hole. He's going to come up shooting. Can't hit. Rebound Donahoe. No, back out to Hole. Now here's Armour. 40 seconds left to play. Hops into the lane. Dumps it off to Liam. Liam gets the deuce inside. There's now another one. Is Donahoe going to pull it back? That's good sportsmanship, but <laughs> the bench doesn't like it. <laughs> oh, man. One of the most fun things in basketball is, is high school basketball bench mobs. And Anderson, we get a lot of that here. As that's going to do it for us, 63-24 to 24 Anderson. Another dominant game as they going to push their uh, win streak to 10. 9-0 in district overall, 22-8 and eight are the Anderson Trojans this season. We will be back next week on Tuesday for that rematch against Northeast Early College High School. Very much looking forward to that one. Follow that up by going on the road to Lockhart. So go down early, grab yourself some barbecue. But that'll do it for us, 63-24. to 24. Jack Francis, 18 points and... Under three quarters, Jackson Gill, 11 points. The only two players in double figures for Anderson. Wagner with nine, Blackerby with eight, Langley with six, Corey Price off the bench in the fourth with five. Two points for Bazarian, Duncan, Liam Donahoe. And that's it for Anderson. They started the third quarter on a 14 to nothing run. They score 34 points in the second half on way to a route of the Navarro Vikings. Christian Tumbe and Kelvin Phillips, 11 points and nine points. Um respectively for them so coming back should be the return of Mitchell Whitlow coming up pretty soon Anderson could use <laughs> could they use more defense I'm not sure <laughs> not sure if it would matter this team is uh, humming on all cylinders but we'll be happy to get a key contributor back a guy that just knows what he's doing plays the game the right way love to have Mitchell back and back into the starting lineup but that'll do it for us here I have been Jack Farrell as I have been all season and you know for most of my life too
but we're going to go ahead and sign off. Hope you all have a great night and a great rest of your week. we got a quick game for you so you can go and hit the town and get yourself a nice dinner. Going to go ahead and hit it. like to thank you all for tuning in once again. It's 63 to 24. We will be back on Tuesday at 8 p.m. back at our place. like to thank you all for tuning in one more time, and good night.